Hi, fourth grade. So this is video two for your English lesson this week. Last time we met, we talked about contractions and double negatives. So I hope that you did okay on that. Um, right now, I'm gonna introduce to you and talk about prefixes. You're gonna, and we're gonna do page 93 um, together, and then you'll do 94 on your own. And then like I said, that's it for this week. Next week we'll have a review and we'll complete the workbook pages for your chapter review and then a test next Thursday, Friday. So you have two weeks to prepare. I think you should be good with that. We'll do a nice review, okay? So follow me up here. I used this example for um, third grade. I thought it was a neat way to display prefixes. Now we're not really gonna be talking about the suffixes of the of a word and I know you guys learn prefixes I'm pretty sure we've talked about them in spelling before um, but I found this neat idea a prefix obviously is a word added to the beginning of a root word and then a suffix is a word added to the end of it so I thought this was a really neat example this little guy's belly or his spring is the root word okay and then his head comes before his body that's the prefix and then the suffix would come at the end of the word, at his butt, okay? So I thought that was kind of cute um, and a different way to just display prefix and suffix. Um, and then these are some examples of prefixes and suffixes, and then they're just a real short meaning. There's more of an elaborate meaning in your workbook on the, um, in the little cheat box, you know, that's always like your helper in your workbook. Um, but this was just a fun way, like I said, so like the prefix re means again, but if you look in your book, and let me switch screens, um, it can mean back to, again or back. An example would be to reread, and then the meaning would be to read again. Funny, I have, I have you reread things all the time for me, huh? So turn into your workbook page 93 if you're not already there with me, and you can see the definition of prefix at the top in blue just as a reminder. And then they give you a bunch of examples of prefixes, the meanings of the prefix, an example of the prefix, and then a meaning of the word, it, the whole, like the prefix and the root word put together. Okay, so for example, let's go ahead and do the first one. It says the prefix is N-E-N. -E that means in. An example would be enclose and that means to close in. So you kind of have like <clears throat> two meanings. You have the prefix and the meaning of the prefix, but then when you take the prefix and add it to the root word, then you have a whole meaning of that word in its entirety. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, let's go ahead and review the next one just so that you get it, okay? So we have the prefix I -M -M and I N in and that they both mean into and then um, an example for each one would be implant and then for in would be indoors okay and if you take the M and the in off you still have plant and door so there's your root word and then um, implant means to plant inside Indoors means inside the doors of a building, okay? Or inside your house, something like that. This lesson's honestly pretty easy. I think you would get this um, with no trouble at all. So let's look at the first guided practice. Number one, it says, so the directions want you to make a new word by adding a prefix to the base word to fit the meaning in parentheses, which is in blue at the end of the sentence. So number one, the blue says not possible. Making a good grade in history seemed blank to Leah. So if it's not possible, come back up to your chart, find what means not, and you have and you may have to try there they give you three M, N, and non, and what makes sense. Um, so number one is actually impossible. Making a good grade in history seemed impossible to Leah. Um, if you go back and try the other ones, making a good grade in history seemed impossible. In is, that's, doesn't really sound right. And then 
making a good grade in history seemed non-possible to Leah. They don't really sound right. So um, try, if you are having trouble knowing what they are, try doing that. Let's do number two together. My goldfish are blank today. They're not active. They're inactive. Um, and it's kind of the same thing. If you go back up to what the meaning of the prefix is not, you can, there's a bunch. So you have to might you may have to try and try a couple different ones to see what sounds right and what makes the most sense. Go ahead and finish those three and four on your own. Um, five and six, underline the word in each sentence that has a prefix. Fill in the circle next to the correct meaning of the word you underline. Let's do five together. The speaker mispronounced the name of the island. So did she pronounce it badly or pronounced it before? Badly. The speaker mispronounced, so pronounced badly. Okay. Go ahead and finish that on your own. I think you'll be fine. And then page 94. And that's it for this week. And I'll see you next week for review.